Friends class, happy Wednesday and welcome to our read aloud. Before we get started, I just want to do a quick review. You should have already watched the short video on the different sounds of the vowel I. Now vowel I can either be long or it can be short. When vowel I is long, it says its name or it says I. When vowel I is short, it says its sound. It says I. I. So today we're going to be reading Mike Fink. It's a tall tale retold and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. As I read, I want you to listen and identify words in this story that use either the long I or short I. Are you ready? Mike Fink, a tall tale retold and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. Mike was born not far from the Allegheny Mountains. Right from the start, it was clear that he was destined for a life of action. He hated being shut up indoors, and so when he was only two days old, he ran away from home. There were rumors that Mike had joined a troop of acrobatic frogs that traveled from pond to pond. I hear the words, Mike, right, it, destined, life, indoors. In the name Mike, is the vowel, is I long or short? Talk about it with an adult or a sibling. In the name Mike, is, the, is I long or short? That's right, it's long because it says its name. It says I. Let's continue. Mike's grandfather came to fetch him. The whole town's talking about a grandson of mine who's been hanging out with a gang of rowdy frogs, he thundered. From now on, you'll stay home and behave like a normal infant. Once again, Mike rebelled furiously against being confined indoors. He leaped up and down on the bed with such force that he catapulted through the roof. I hear the words, Mike, him, mine, Infant, like, indoors. In the word mine, is I long or short? That's right, it's long because it says its name. It says I. What about in the word infant? Infant, is I long or short? That's right, it's short because it says its sound. It says I. Let's continue. On the next leap, Mike rocketed high enough to see the vast network of rivers to the west. There he spotted the keelboats and heard the crew's hearty songs. Wow, he catapulted really high into the air. Mike plummeted back into the house, singing, I'm going to be a keelboat man! Cock-a-doodle-doo! Once again, Mike set off a family uproar. Keelboatmen are ruffians, rowdies, and riffraff, wailed his grandmother. This new outrage will disgrace the family name forever. Mike's mother decided then and there that her son would be much happier if she raised him on the frontier. So the next morning they joined a wagon train heading west. I hear the words. Mike. Family decided if disgrace and the word disgrace is I long or short? That's right. I is short. That's because it says it's sound. It says if disgrace. Disgrace. If. Mike loved the freedom of wilderness life. However, the sudden death of their ox threw his mother into despair. How will we clear the land, she cried. How will we plow? Cheer up, Mama, said Mike. I can handle those chores. And he did. But Mike never stopped dreaming of becoming a keelboatman. He had heard that wrestling was their favorite sport, and it was also his. He was not tall for his age, but he was sturdy and quick. Even when he wrestled boys much bigger and older than himself, he usually came out on top.
I hear words such as wilderness, life, his, I, did, like, his, quick, bigger, himself. And the word quick is I long or short? That's right, it's short because it says it's sound. It says it. Mike also showed an early talent for riflery. He called the family gun Bang All, and he soon became such a crackerjack marksman that he could shoot the shell off an egg. Along about the time he turned 16, he entered a local shooting match. Each entrant had three chances to score. Mike hit the bullseye on his first try, but his next two attempts left the target unmarked. One lucky hit and two wild shots puts you out of the running, chuckled the scorekeeper. But Mike got the last laugh when he showed him all three bullets lined up behind the bullseye as neatly as peas in a pod. You hear the words Mike, riflery, family, time, 16, hit, wild, in. And the word 16 is I long or short. That's right, it's short. It says it. It says it's sound. What about in the word time? What sound does I make? It makes the I sound, which means it's long. Very good. Mike's skill with a rifle landed him a job as a scout, but he was still drawn westward by the memories of those great rivers. Finally, Mike found himself face to face with Jack Carpenter, the king of keelboatmen. Howdy, said Mike. I'm looking for a job. This river cracks pipsqueaks like peanuts, said Carpenter. Come back when you're ten feet taller, and then we'll find out if you're strong enough to pull your share of the load. I may be short, said Mike, but I'm strong, and I'd like a chance to prove it. I'm stronger than a buffalo stampede and meaner than a rattlesnake with a bellyache snarled Carpenter. If you can lick me, the job is yours, and so is this red feather. Hmm. Let's see what happens. You got yourself a deal, cried Mike. Cock-a-doodle-doo, let's wrestle! Carpenter charged forward like a bull. Then he hurled Mike hundreds of miles into the heart of the Rocky Mountains. Man, he hurled him far, far away. And if you viewed our video on maps, I pointed out where the Rocky Mountains are, so you can actually see that on the map. Well, that set me back a bit, admitted Mike, but I'm determined to be a keelboatman. He decided to get in shape by wrestling with the grizzlies. At first, those bears rolled him onto his back before he could say Jack Carpenter. But Mike kept trying, and little by little, his strength increased until he was able to hold his own. Finally, he decided to test himself by challenging Big Bart, the heavyweight champion of the Rockies. I hear the words fit, determined, decided, in, grizzlies, Mike, little, increased, until, his, finally, himself. In the word decided, is I long or short? Decided. That's right, it's long because it says its name. It says, I decided. When Mike came out on top, he knew he was ready for the keelboat job. Cock-a-doodle-doo, I'm back for round two. Let's wrestle, hollered Mike. Again, Carpenter charged like a bull, but this time Mike met him head on. Let's see if he wins this time. They wrestled up and down the riverbanks for several weeks, kicking up tidal waves and toppling trees. Finally, Carpenter found himself locked helplessly in a Rocky Mountain grizzly bear hug. I'm licked, he gasped. After the orneriness had been squeezed out of Jack Carpenter, he became downright agreeable. With Carpenter's help, Mike got the hang of navigating so quickly that the crew voted to make him captain. 
They sang and danced and celebrated all afternoon while the boat drifted lazily down the river toward New Orleans. I hear the words, riverbanks, tidal, finally, grizzly, licked, downright, navigating, quickly, him. And the word tidal, is I long or short? Tidal. That's right, it's long because it says its name. It says I. Heading up river was a different story. The boat had to be pulled and pushed continually to prevent the powerful current from sweeping it backward. The men forged through rapids and up waterfalls, pausing occasionally to tangle with the man-eating alligators and enormous snapping turtles that lay in wait for them. So it sounds like it's harder to go up river than it is to go down river. Whenever river keelboats met, there were races on the water and games and sports on land. Men lined up by the dozens to try and win Mike's feather, but no one got the best of him. His hat began to look like a bonfire, and they called him the king of the keelboatmen. Mike loved all the rough and tumble excitement, but he also loved the times when the river was silent and still. He thought that his life as a keelboatman was just about perfect, and he hoped it would never end. But then one morning, Mike saw dark clouds on the horizon. He was told that these were steamboats and that they were being sent to take over the river trade. Mike hated the shriek of their whistles and the clatter of their paddle wheels. He hated the foul-smelling smoke that fogged the river as they churned past him. Faster and larger steamboats kept arriving. They created traffic jams at the major ports that made it impossible for Mike and the other keelboat captains to unload their cargo. A showdown was sparked when a steamboat skippered by Hilton P. Blathersby shoved Mike's keelboat away from the dock. This garbage scow is blocking river traffic and should be sunk, hollered Blathersby. I'm king of the keelboatmen, roared Mike. I'll fight for this dock. I'll fight for this river. All hands prepare for naval combat bellowed Blathersby. Mm. It looks like Mike is about to fight with Hilton P. Blathersby. With whistles blowing, bells clanging, and smokestacks belching, the powerful steamboat charged forward like a rogue elephant. For a moment, Mike managed to raise the prow of his monstrous opponent, forcing its stern under the water. But then its weight overwhelmed him, and Mike and his keelboat were gone. A second later, the cold water that had rushed into the steamboat's red-hot boiler set off an enormous explosion. One of the few survivors was Captain Blathersby. He spotted Mike's hat from his lifeboat and ordered his men to row closer so he could collect the feathers. After all, he said, now I'm king of the keelboatmen and king of the river. Blathersby was astonished to find Mike underneath his hat. Cock-a-doodle-doo, I'm back for round two. Let's wrestle he cried. Some say that Blathersby was thrown all the way to Grizzly Bear Country, but no one knows for sure. As for Mike Fink, he still cheered from one end of the river to the other as the undefeated king of the Keelboatmen. The end. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.